Okay, this is the AP Calculus BC lesson video for sections 2.3 and 2.4. And really what we're going through in these two sections are just the basic derivative rules. And I will tell you, if you already know the basic derivative rules, there's not gonna be anything in here new for you. So you can watch the video, it's really, really short if you want to, but if you already know your rules and you just wanna practice with them, that's totally fine too. But for those of you who have not learned all the basic derivative rules, I'm just gonna tell you that there's a lot of information packed in here. I'm not going through where all of these derivative rules come from. I'm just gonna show you a basic idea of how they work. And more than anything, what you need to do is practice a lot with these derivative rules. The rules that um, we're gonna learn in this section are gonna be rules that you're gonna use for the rest of this course and for any calculus course moving forward. If you take differential equations after calculus, you would use them in there. These are super, super important rules. So the fact that I'm not spending a ton of time on them doesn't mean that they're not important. It just means that the only way that you're going to learn them is by practicing with them. So I will show you at the end the derivation for the power rule. But for the most part, what I want you to realize is all of these derivative rules can be derived using the definition of a derivative. So these are just the shortcuts that are created using the definition of a derivative. So the first rule we have here is the power rule. And the power rule is when we have a polynomial expression. When we have a polynomial expression, like the one that's given here where we have x to the n power, um, you can see that if we wanna take the derivative, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the exponent down. So n becomes the coefficient, and now it's times x to the n minus one power. So a really simple example of that is what we have right here. f of x is x to the fifth. That means the derivative f prime of x would be 5x to the fourth. Okay, so you'll see a lot of examples on the power rule, and you'll just need to practice with that. The power rule is the number one most basic rule that we use. Um, the next one is the derivative of a constant. This one we don't even really need a proof for. This one you can just reason through it. If I have the derivative of some constant value, we're saying C is a constant here. Think about what the graph of a constant value looks like. Like say for instance, Y is equal to two. That's a horizontal line. Remember the derivative is just the slope of that line. If I have a horizontal line, the slope is always zero. So the derivative of a constant is always zero. And you can see this example here, the derivative with respect to X of five is just zero. So remember, when you see that notation, the d dx means you're taking the derivative with respect to x of whatever follows. So the derivative of a constant, like I said, is always zero. Okay, so the next one we have here is called the sum and the difference rule. And this rule is just basically the idea that if I have more than one term in my expression, I can take the derivative of each term independently. So here we're saying the different terms in our expression are u and v. So I can just take the derivative of the u and add or subtract that, um, the derivative of the v, and that would be my result. So as an example here, you can see we're taking the derivative with respect to t of this cubic expression, and we take the derivative of each individual term using the power rule, and then you can see we've got this 16 here that's a constant. So the result that we have over here is just the derivative of each term combined together. All right, so the next rule we have is called the product rule. And this is where it starts to get a little more complicated. With the product rule, that means we have two expressions multiplied together. So you can see here, we're taking the derivative of some u times some v. And the way we do this is we do the derivative of the first expression times the second expression, plus the first expression times the derivative of the second expression. So when you see it in this form, it might be a little bit confusing, but it sees, as soon as you see a worked out example, it becomes very easy to understand. So looking at this example, we have x squared plus one times x cubed plus three. There's really two ways we could work through this problem. One thing we could do is we could actually multiply out those two binomial expressions, and then we could, you know, from there, take the derivative of the result. So that's one way to do it. In a lot of cases, the multiplication that we would need to do is not that simple. So instead, we're going to use the product rule. And that's what's been done over here. 
So we're treating the x squared plus one as basically like the u here, and then the x cubed plus three would be like the v. So the derivative of x squared plus one is two x times the v, and then the derivative of the v term would be three x squared, and then this would be my u term. Now that result that I have there is not actually my solution. That's just the calculus step of the process. So the result of this then means that you've actually got to go through and you've got to do the algebra to combine all your like terms and get it into a simplified form. So I'm not going to go through the algebra when we go through these derivative rules because I'm expecting you to know the algebra. What I'm going to go through is, you know, how does the rule itself work? And keep in mind as you're practicing, you need to do the algebra to simplify everything down. A lot of times the algebra that you do is more difficult than the calculus that you do. And that's actually as a general rule in this class, the algebra tends to be the thing that trips people up as opposed to the actual calculus work that they're doing. That's part of the reason we spend so much time on those prerequisites and making sure you have that fresh in your mind um, because it's so vitally important to this course. Okay, so let's move on here. The next one is called the quotient rule. This one's really easy to get yourself confused on. So you're gonna to wanna to practice with this one a lot if you haven't seen it before. So the quotient rule is when you have a rational expression, u divided by v. So I'm gonna take the derivative of the numerator, that's what du dx is, times the denominator, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. Okay, and that's divided by the denominator squared. And again, that rule seems a little bit arbitrary. There's actually a proof and an ex explanation of why this rule works out the way it does, we can come up with that rule using the definition of a derivative. But for us, we're just gonna apply that rule. So here's an example. We've got the derivative of x squared minus one over x squared plus one. So you can see that the derivative of the numerator is two x times my denominator minus the derivative of the numerator uh, excuse me, the derivative of the denominator times the numerator. Okay, so then that's divided by the denominator squared. Now, again, we've got this, you know, rational expression as a result, that would not be my final solution. That would be the result that would be an intermediate step. And now at this point, I need to expand everything out. I need to combine all the like terms. You can leave the denominator as x squared plus one squared, but in the numerator, you need to combine everything together that you can and get it as simplified as possible. All right, let's move on to the derivative rule for the exponential function with the natural base e. So the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. That's pretty much the easiest derivative rule that we have outside of the constant. Um, when you take the derivative of this expression, e to the x minus x squared, you can see we're gonna use two different derivative rules really three if you really want to get technical, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Then we're doing the difference. So we're going to take the derivative of the second term separately, and then we're going to use the power rule on the x squared. Okay, so a lot of times what you'll start to see happening here is that these rules will start to combine all together. And when we get into the chain rule, that's where this is going to get a lot more complicated because the chain rule starts to bring a lot of these rules together. Okay, we also have the general exponential function a to the x. So as opposed to e to the x, where we have that natural base e, a to the x means our base could be any number. So this a could be like three to the x or two to the x or five to the x. So anything to the x power, that's just a general exponential function. When we take the derivative, we're gonna get a to the x natural log of a. Now think about the e to the x rule. If we were doing the same rule for e to the x, we would get e to the x natural log of e. Well, the natural log of e is one, so we just have e to the x. So it's not actually a different rule for the e to the x function, it's just a special case of the a to the x rule. Okay, so you can see an example here, this is a really easy one. So four to the x would just be four to the x natural log of four. So with these rules, the more you practice them, the easier it is going to be to remember them. And that's the main thing. You've got to do repetition on this. I gave you a lot of practice to work with. I gave you a worksheet attached to this that's not due for a grade, but then you also have what's in Wiley Plus that is due for a grade. You'll also have a quiz over this. And I'm intentionally going to go high on 
the amount of repetitions that you do with derivative practice because it is something you just have to know just automatically. It has to be something you don't even have to, or it needs to be something you don't even have to stop and think about. Okay, so the last thing we have here is the idea of a higher order derivative. So we've talked a lot about first derivatives. Well, the first derivative, remember, was like the slope of the tangent line to our function at a point. Well, when we get into higher order derivatives, the different derivatives have different meanings. The only ones that we're really going to work a lot with are the first derivative and the second derivative. But we will get into situations in the second semester when we do our series unit where we're going to have to take, you know, not just a first or second derivative, we might have to get up to maybe like a tenth derivative. And that's kind of a long drawn out process. But the main thing I want to focus on here is just the notation. So notice here's my function, here's the first derivative, here's the second derivative, here's the third derivative. Notice we're just using primes to represent those derivatives. After a while, it starts to be a little bit inefficient and kind of confusing to just keep using more and more primes. And especially, like I said, if we're getting into like a 10th derivative, that starts to be too much. So what we do once we pass the third derivative, we usually start using parentheses and then whatever number we put in those parentheses, that's going to indicate which derivative number you're on. So this would indicate um, the fourth derivative of y. Okay, so um, you can see that all we're doing to get successive derivatives is just taking the derivative of the function we just found. So we get y prime, take the derivative of y prime, it gives us y double prime, and so on. All right, so we talked about this notation previously. The notations that you're primarily going to see are these ones that I am circling here. Remember these notations over there, the, the capital D, those are notations we typically see in more of like a multivariable calculus setting. All right, um, the last thing I want to mention here, like I said before, um, I do have the proof for one of the derivative rules here. And I'm not really going to spend a lot of time going through it. I just wanted you to have it and see it so that you can understand that these are not just random rules. It's still using the definition of a derivative, the same definition of derivative that we talked about, you know, several days back. So this is proving the derivative rule for x to the n or the power rule. So you can see down here, they're talking about a little bit of stuff with the binomial expansion because we have to know what the terms are going to look like when we expand them out, when we have a plus b to the n. So that's what's going on there. And the reason that's important is because in our definition of derivative, we have an x plus h to the n when we do the power rule. So what you've got down below here is just showing essentially this is what it would look like if we plugged into the definition of a derivative for x to the n. Notice we have that x plus h to the n. So now using that shortcut for binomial expansion, we can kind of see what the pattern of the terms is going to be. So that's what all of this is. And then we know what's going to cancel out. The x to the n's will cancel. Then we can divide out the h. And then when we take the limit as h approaches 0, the only thing we're left with is what we have here, n times x to the n minus 1. So you can go through that in a little bit more detail if you want. But the main idea is all of these derivative rules can be proven using the definition of a derivative. I'm never going to ask you to do that. I'm not going to ask you to prove the derivative rules, but I think it's useful to at least look at a couple of the derivations just to understand that, yes, everything we do for a derivative is based on that same basic idea that we started with, with the limit as h approaches 0 of x plus h to the n minus, uh, or excuse me, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, as you work through this. Okay, so the last thing I have attached here is a worksheet. And like I said before, this is not something that you have to turn in. I put this here for extra practice because if this is your first time working through these derivative rules, you are going to want to do as much of this as possible. These do not take very long. So this is something like if you know that if you've practiced, you know, done the Wiley plus work first and you came to this worksheet second, this worksheet is probably going to take you 10 or 15 minutes, but it's going to give you a lot of extra practice. So I also attached all of the solutions for this worksheet so that you can check your answers when you're done. So it's definitely up to you whether or not you do it, but if it's your first time through derivatives, 
I would highly, highly encourage you to take the time to get in some extra, to get in some extra practice so that you've really got these down to where you don't even have to think about them. Okay, so if you have any questions on the rules, uh, make sure you bring those to class with you next time. But more importantly, make sure you go through and start practicing with the Wiley Plus and practice with this worksheet if you need to.